today is January 25th, and uh, the Oscars have just announced their nominations, and the ceremony, of course, will come out on the 27th of next month in February. And so here, in front of my computer, I have all of the nominations. Now, last year, I did my Predictions and Rants video, and that was uh, the first time I've ever vlogged. And if you're watching this, it probably still seems like the first time I've ever vlogged. But I'm going to do a, uh, kind of like what I did last year, and just sort of make some predictions and uh, probably rant and rave a little bit about certain things. But this year, I'm a lot more caught up than I was last year. Last year, I uh, didn't really, hadn't really seen most of the movies. I'd seen maybe like four of, you know, the big ones and stuff like that. This year, I made, a, made an effort to see all of the nominations beforehand, um, largely because now I have this channel and I have this show and I want to keep up and uh, know what's going on movie-wise, not months after the fact. So, I think my predictions are going to be pretty clear and probably pretty correct. So, if you're one of those people who actually, like, you know, bet on this stuff, like they do in, uh, in Vegas, you can... You can can make place bets on Oscar nominations, um, watch my video, because I think I'm going to, if you were a betting man, I would be a great asset, um, as far as the predictions go, because this year there's not going to be a lot of big surprises, I don't think. I think it's going to be pretty clear cut and easy to predict, um, even more so than last year. So, so here we go. Um, let's start with, la la la, start with best visual effects, I believe this is one of the ones I did last year. And for best visual effects nominated this year, we have Alice in Wonderland, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, Hereafter, uh, Inception and Iron Man 2. Now, the Visual Effects Awards uh, often are there to nominate films that otherwise would never be nominated, like Alice in Wonderland, Harry Potter, Hereafter, and Iron Man 2. Um, so, I think based upon that, we can obviously see that uh, Inception will get the award because I have a feeling like this year, Inception is a fan favorite. Every, everyone, all the normal everyday moviegoers, not the critics and uh, film buffs, but just your average people who pay to go see movies, um, their favorite movie this year probably was Inception. And a lot of people are going to be tuning in to see Inception win stuff. And since, uh, since visual effects are one of the uh, first awards they give out, and all of the tech awards, the conceptions are is going to sweep those to keep people watching. So, yes, it's it's not all that flashy. There's not a lot of uh, big noticeable special effects. I mean, there are, but there isn't. It's it's sort of naturalized special effects, unlike say Alice in Wonderland and Harry Potter, where um, it's all sort of whimsical and magical and blah 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 blah. Um, so there we go. Okay, now, art direction. Art, art direction, again, like the uh, special effects category, is sort of invented so that they can nominate other movies that normally wouldn't get nominated fan favorites rather than critic favorites and academy favorites. So, um, again, we're seeing Alice in Wonderland, Harry Potter, Inception, The King's Speech, and True Grit. Um, Call me crazy, but I think it's going to go to the King's Speech. Not necessarily because it deserves it, not because it's the most flashy or the most noticeable, but because they're going to give stuff to the King's Speech um, as much as they can without giving it the stuff that uh, it's really going to want. Um, like, best picture, blah, 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 blah. We'll get to that later. So I think that King's Speech 
will probably win that. But um, actually, I personally, when I was an Academy voter, I would give it to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows because uh, I really like the art direction of that movie. It's one of the standout qualities, and uh, they, they, they're, those movies are actually getting more and more artful as they go, and uh, cinematography and all of that stuff is it's really getting outstanding in those movies. So, best achievements in cinematography. Uh, Black Swan, Matthew Libatique, uh, Inception, Wally Pfister, um, The King's Speech, Danny Cohen, Social Network, Jeff Cronenworth, and True Grit, Roger Deakins. Now, I don't know a lot of cinematographies, uh, cinematographers or, or directors of photography. Uh, by name, but they're two of my favorite ones that I do know by name are nominated this year. That's Roger Deakins and Wally Pfister. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in all of these technical categories, I would I think it's really between Inception and King's Speech because those are the two movies they're going to want to give. Um, minor awards to this year. And I think I think this one's going to be Inception. Wally Pfister, funnily enough, if you don't know this, uh, look it up. It's totally you know available on IMDb, this information. Wally Pfister actually got to start um, doing low-budget uh, softcore porn uh, <laughs> through the early 90s until he uh, teamed up with uh, Nolan to do to do Memento and then he actually became a uh, you know legitimate DP uh, but I think he's he's a beautiful cinematographer and he really has an eye for the camera and he does cityscapes like nobody's else, like nobody's business um, and I think this is one of the ones that Inception's going to get so good for Wally Pfister I hope he makes a joke about the softcore porn during the awards now Best Writing Screenplay Based on Material Previously Produced or Published, so Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, and if, this one's really easy. If you don't know this one, if you can't figure this out, then you just haven't been watching movies this year. Uh, 127 Hours by Danny Boyle and Simon uh, Beaufoy. The Social Network by Aaron Sorkin. Toy Story 3 by Michael Arndt, John Lasseter, Andrew Stanton, and Lee Unkridge. Um, Pixar movies or any Disney movie or any animated movie for that, for that matter always have, you know, a whole team of people uh, for writing credits because they're sort of, uh, you know, jammed out in big table sessions. True, Get, tr <laughs> True Grit by Joel and Ethan Cohen and Winter's Bone by Deborah Granick and Anne Rossellini. Now, <clears throat> as I've already stated in plenty videos in the past. Uh, the, show's, the screenplay for The Social Network by Aaron Sorkin is not only one of the best screenplays of the year, but one of the best screenplays written in the last decade. And definitely his best screenplay, which is saying a lot since he's done a lot of really good movies and TV. Uh, so of course it's going to Aaron Sorkin. Um, if, the, if they didn't win this award, then you could just give up on the Oscars because that award is tailored to give to Aaron Sorkin this year. Uh, it's Aaron Sorkin's movie, it, the screenplay is the star of that movie, it's obviously going to go to him. Um, and I do think he deserves it. As much as I love Toy Story, as much as I love True Grit, as much as I loved 127 Hours, it's going to Social Network. Okay, best screenplay written directly for the screen, so uh, best original screenplay. Now this one's kind of interesting because it's more of a toss-up. Uh, <laughs> Another Year by Mike Lee. Uh, the Fighter by Scott Silver, Paul Tamasey, Eric Johnson, and Keith Dorrington. That was in production for a long time, so I think that was one of those screenplays that kind of got hot potatoed around until the last writer. <clears throat> Inception by Christopher Nolan. The Kids Are Alright by Lisa Chaladenko and Stuart Blumberg. And The King's Speech by David Seidler. And I think this year, oh, it's going to be between, as I've already said, um, any award that's not one of the really big ones, even though this is kind of a big one. Um, 
they're going to either give to the King's Speech or Inception because it's not going to. Neither of them are going to win Best Picture, in my opinion. Um, so I think this one we'll see <clears throat> go to the King's Speech. Now the King's Speech is the only movie of the big nominations that I haven't been able to see because the independent really released, and I live in a small town, small towns don't show independent films until way after the fact, unfortunately. So I can't really say if it deserves it or not. Um, I do know that I really like the screenplay for The Kids Are Alright, I really like the screenplay for The Fighter, I really like the screenplay for Inception. I think Inception is sort of a <clears throat> uh, very cleverly written screenplay, as most uh, most Nolan screenplays are, they're, you know, they're kind of puzzle box movies, and that's, you know, takes a lot um, on the page to make what you see happen. Um, so in a way, I, I sort of want Inception to win, um, but I think we'll see that one go to the King's Speech. We'll go to the acting awards, because um, these are the big ones. These are the ones that people really care about, and, uh, and, uh, I think we're going to see this play out a lot, like the Golden Globes this year. But there are some some interesting surprises here or there. <clears throat> so, best performance by a supporting actress. We have Amy Adams for The Fighter. Helena Bottom Carter for The King's Speech. Melissa Leo for The Fighter. Haley Steinfeld for True Grit. And Jackie Weaver for Animal Kingdom. Now, there's one nomination here that should seem... Um, sort of uh, absent. And for me, that's Mila Kunis for Black Swan. I'm surprised it wasn't nominated this year, and instead, uh, I think Kaylee Steinfeld should have been nominated for Best Actress instead of Supporting Actress, because it's not really a supporting role. She's sort of the star of the movie, um, so it's a little unfair. <clears throat> but she's young, and it's her first big movie, so they're not going to be that nice. Um, and I think this year, sometimes supporting actress is a, an award they like to surprise people with and really kind of give it some unknown um, stature. But I think this year we will see this award go to Helena Bottom Carter for the King's Speech because they're going to want to give the King's Speech as much as they can. Um, because it will be disappointed later that night. <laughs> uh, best performance by a supporting actor. Actor. Male. Duh. Um, we have Christian Bale for The Fighter. John Hawks for Winter's Bone. Which is the only performance in that movie that really did anything for me. Um, Jeremy Renner for The Town. Um, remember he was nominated last year for The Hurt Locker. Which is probably the only reason he's nominated for this at all, because uh, the town didn't get a lot of love this year for the award season, even though it was trying to be an awards contender. And I think that's because it came out around the same time as The Social Network. Mark Ruffalo for The Kids Are Alright. Uh, Jeffrey Rush for The King's Speech. Now, the Golden Globes, Christian Bale won. And I think Christian Bale deserves it. Um, <clears throat> however... Depending on how Supporting Actress went. If Helena Bottom Carter wins for Supporting Actress, then you will know, without a doubt, that Jeffrey Rush will win for The King's Speech. I'm pretty sure. However, however, if she doesn't, then you will know that Christian Bale is going to win for The Fighter. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, that could blow my mind, and then neither of them could win, or or uh, it could be staggered where one wins and the other one doesn't, or whatever. But I really think that that's how it's going to play out. It's either going to be a King's Speech sweep for the sporting actresses and actors, or it's going to really play out differently. Um, I really like John Hawke's performance, and I actually would kind of be cool with him winning. I really like Jeremy Renner's performance for The Town. However, I just... I have a problem with that movie really winning anything because I think it's just kind of a typical thriller. It really, it was good, I bought it, it's a fun movie, but it's not really an Oscar kind of movie, um, especially since it's so reliant on other movies before it. 
Um, so yeah, it's going to be Christian Bale or Jeffrey Rush, and I'm leaning towards Jeffrey Rush on this award. Even though I think Christian Bale probably deserves it more. Okay, uh, best performance by an actress in a leading role. We have, so leading actress, we have Annette Benning for The Kids Are Alright, Nicole Kidman for Rabbit Hole, Jennifer Lawrence for Winter's Bone, Natalie Portman for Black Swan, and Michelle Williams for Blue Valentine. Um, this is it's really not that hard. Uh, I think this is going to be really the only big award that Black Swan gets, um, if it gets any at all. And I think that Natalie Portman is going to win for Black Swan. Uh, it's the thing that most people come away from the movie with, other than, you know, a complete mindfuck. Um, they come out of the movie saying, wow, Natalie Portman, she did so good, she had to learn how to dance, she lost all that weight, and it's a very interior role, and she had to play kind of two sides. But I think that, uh, that this year, Natalie Portman will win for Black Swan, and should win. Um, as much as I loved Annette Benning. Or the kids are alright, and actually those are the only two, uh, yeah, that I've seen Jennifer Lawrence in Winter's Bone. I wasn't impressed by her. I thought she was kind of blah. Um, I don't know why people are ranting and raving about how good she was. She just played a redneck. Sorry, that's my opinion. Um, so there you go. Best performance by a lead actor. Uh, we have, this is kind of interesting. Javier Bardem for Beautiful, only because it's not an English-speaking movie, and I'm kind of surprised they're going that route where they're going to have, they're going to nominate for one of their main awards, Best Actor, uh, a non-English-speaking role. Uh, that's cool. It's interesting. Um, he won't win, but it's interesting. Jeff Bridges for True Grit. He won't win because he won last year. Jesse Eisenberg for The Social Network. He won't win because he deserves it and because... Uh, he's really young, and he kind of splits audiences in the middle, whether they like him or not. And Colin Firth for The King's Speech, he will win. And James Franco for 127 Hours, he won't win. Um, so there you go. I've already kind of said it. Colin Firth is going to win for The King's Speech, and I think this is the one that you can really call. It's really easy. It's like Natalie Portman for Best Actress. Um, those two performances are pretty much locked. Okay, so now we're going to uh, go to Best Animated Film, which I skipped because I think uh, as years go by, animation is being more and more considered and uh, it's becoming a bigger award that people are kind of excited for. Because animation, actually, believe it or not, um, gets seen by more people than almost any other movie, any other type of movie, especially out of Oscar movies. The animations usually are the ones that your everyday moviegoers go see because they take their kids and the kids want to see them. And Best Animated Feature Film. Uh, the nominations are How to Train Your Dragon, The Illusionist, which is a foreign film, uh, but the only reason it really is being considered, as far as I'm concerned, is because it was the last screenplay ever written by uh, Yakas Tati. Um, and if you don't know who that is, just Google him or something. He was a uh, art film director back in the the day, um, and a kind of a critic favorite. And Toy Story three. Now it's going to play out exactly like it does every year that a Pixar movie is nominated for Best Picture and Best Animated Film. It'll win Best Animated Film. It will not win Best Picture. Um, and until I... That bums me out in, the, in some ways. That it bums me out for Pixar because they've been knocking about in the ballpark. Every single time they make a movie, it is obviously the Best Animated Film of the Year. Um, and they make so much money, and they're always in critics' top ten lists, but they never get the respect they probably deserve. Um, and even me, myself, I'm kind of torn on this, but uh, Toy Story is definitely going to get it. Um, again, it's locked. Now I'll talk about uh, Best Achievement in Directing. So this is Best Director. Um, and... Uh, 
been quite a year for directors. Uh, a lot of auteur-driven movies and uh, just very interesting stuff. So I'll quit it and just talk. Okay. Darren Aronofsky for Black Swan. Joel and Ethan Cohen for True Grit. Um, David Fincher for The Social Network. Tom Hooper for The King's Speech. And David O. Russell for The Fighter. Okay. So here we go. This is uh, this is where the Oscars are going to show their true colors. Uh, halfway through the ceremony, everyone's going to say, oh, it's the King's Speech here. They're winning this, they're winning that, they're getting all these acting accolades. But I think here is where the Oscars is really going to show how they feel. And I think this one is going to go to David Fincher for The Social Network. He's never won before. Uh... And if you know anything about the Oscars, you know that very rarely does the director and the best picture not go together. They usually mirror each other. So whoever wins best director will tell you who's going to win best picture <clears throat> or what movie is going to win best picture. And I think since I think, I'm pretty sure that The Social Network is going to win best picture, I'm pretty sure that David Fincher will win for the social network. Um, and he deserves it. It was, great. it was a great movie. It was well directed. It's maybe not the most David Finchery, David Fincher movie, but uh, I think he will get it. Um, however, again, if I was a, an Academy voter, I'd be kind of out. I'd be, I'd be weird. I would nominate all over the place. I wouldn't go by their little Academy rules. And I would nominate Black Swan because I think that is a director's movie if there ever was one. Um, just watched it again last night and that movie is so well directed um, in every sense of the word. As much as I love the Coen brothers and as much as I love The Fighter, I thought it was a great movie. I thought that was again a very auteur driven movie. Uh, David O. Russell um, has done a lot of cool movies in the past. But I think that one's going to go to David Venture. Which, like last year, there are ten nominations for Best Picture instead of the normal five. I don't know how many years this is going to keep going. Um, I don't like it. I know a lot of other people have problems with it. I think it's stupid. I think it's just like they're throwing nominations out like candy at a parade. It's silly. Uh, after a while, it feels like they're really just trying to fill spaces because there's really only so many movies that are deserving of Best Picture of the Year. Um, and it gets it gets kind of crowded, I think. And uh, I think they're just trying to get more people to watch by nominating movies that people actually care about. But, here I go. I digress. This year, the ten nominations for Best Picture are 127 Hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are Alright, The King's Speech, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Toy Story 3 won't win, because it's already a Warren Best Animated Film. That's obvious. I talked a lot about that last year with Up. It's the same picture, it's the same story, it's going to happen again. Um, True Grit won't win, because Joel and Ethan Cohen have already won for uh, uh, No Country for Old Men not that long ago. And, uh... You know, it's a fun movie, it's a great movie, but it's not going to win. Um, it's kind of more of a audience-pleasing kind of movie than an Oscar contender. And I don't even think it would have been nominated if there had been less than ten nominations. The same goes for Winter's Bone. Critic favorite. Uh, almost nobody actually saw that movie, and I really think it's kind of mediocre. Sorry. Um... <clears throat> The Kids Are Alright will not win because, again, uh, not enough people saw it. It didn't really make enough ripples this year. Um, and it's kind of a comedy. It's, sort of, it's a lot lighter in tone and in ambition than most of the movies nominated. I think it's a wonderful film. It's a great film. But it's their token indie that won't win. Um, 127 Hours. Really surprised it's got nominated. Actually, if you go through my list, you'll see that 127 Hours actually got a pretty decent amount of nominations, and I don't think it'll win a single one. But, uh, 
I'm glad to see that it was remembered this year and that it was nominated because I thought that that film had already peaked. But apparently I was wrong. But it won't win. Sorry. Uh, Danny Boyle already won uh, for uh, Slumdog Millionaire. And he wasn't even nominated for Best Director. So there's no way in hell he's going to win for Best Picture. Um, the Fighter won't win. Um, again, it's more of a, cr uh, a crowd pleaser, more of a fan favorite than it is uh, an Academy and Critics favorite. So... Uh, as much as I love the movie, it's just not its year. It's not a uh, not a contender. It's a boxing joke. Really bad one, too. Black Swan won't win because uh, it's a horror film. I mean, if you know, if you've seen the movie, more than anything else, it's a horror film, and horror movies just don't play very well in the academy. In the academy. Um, it would be a brave choice if it won. I don't necessarily think it should win, but if it won, I would be ecstatic, because that would just mean that the Academy just took a 180 on how it usually goes. Um, and I think it's a great movie, and it's uh, one of the better movies of the year, obviously, my number three favorite movie of the year, but it won't win, because it's a horror movie. Okay, and Inception. Um, one of the most successful movies of the year, uh, but it is the it's a science fiction movie, and the Oscars are not friendly to genre films, unfortunately. And I think that uh, as popular as it is, and I, I actually do think that this wasn't just thrown in there to get people to view, um, that helps. But I think that if they just had the normal five nominations, Inception would have still been a contender, and uh, it still wouldn't have won. Sorry. Uh, The King's Speech. Now. The King's Speech. And we have The Social Network. If you're a betting man, you're going to play around with those two movies the most this year. And it's really going to be a balancing act on which one gets more wins. I think The, King, the King's Speech is going to get... Uh, as many smaller awards as it can get, acting awards and uh, set design, costume, makeup, blah blah blah, that stuff will go to the King's Speech and or Inception. Um, and everything else, all your big awards, best, or best adapted screenplay, uh, best director, and best picture are all going to go to the social network. I think it's the social network's year. The critics have spoken. Um, all the other award ceremonies have been giving it to the social network. So unless it wants, unless the Oscars just want to be defiantly different, which they kind of were last year, giving it to Hurt Locker, um, I think it's going to go to the social network because. Uh, what, is it, what else is there to say? It's the best movie of the year, obviously. And it's a great movie, and it's a movie that caters to the youth culture and young people and Facebook and all that stuff, internet culture and all of that stuff, and it could hopefully, in their eyes, bring in more youthful viewers to later awards shows. So, those are my predictions for the year. Uh... I think it's kind of a predictable year. There's some there's some places where it's kind of a toss-up, but I think for the most part, I got this one pretty well locked. Uh, so, perhaps I'll do a video on Oscar night. I'm kind of flirting with the idea of taking my camera to my Oscar party. But uh, we'll probably be talking about this later. And just so you guys know, we're not going to have any more um, rental reviews uh at our studio for the rest of the month until Christopher comes back and we'll probably start doing reviews again um, the first couple weeks of February. So we'll see you then.